Hello guys, welcome to my channel, Mr. Jefferson 105. On today's video, I'm going to be doing cheese. So it's a short tutorial. I'll make it as short as possible. It's a good recipe that I've learned over the years, and it has a mixture of cheese from South America and cheese from Spain. So if you want to know how to how it's done, I'll show you how how I'll do it my way. Very easy. All you need is I'm using this milk bottles, these ones are 4 pints also in uh, there are 2.2 liters each one, I'm using 3 of them yeah, I've got 3 and they cover basically it's about 7 liters for these 2 cases that I'm using so you're gonna make about 300 to 400 uh, grams of cheese okay that's that then also you will need some of these this is the what makes the milk curdle the curdle is all the milk is um, it's in Spanish but I'll put the put a picture on the on the video so that you can see which one I'm using and then see if you can get something similar to that I know if you're from the UK or USA, you maybe you probably have some different things similar to this, and then you can probably use those. So also I've heard that you can use buttermilk and uh, lemon, and then he also works, and he he can make the milk go curdle, do the do the curdles for the milk. Okay, so let's get into it. Ah, uh, before that, last thing, you'll need a big pot. This pot holds from 7 to 8 litres, so pretty much 3 of those gallons fill this up all the way. And that's all you need to make about between 300 to 400 grams of cheese. Okay? Okay guys, so step 1 will be to put all the milk in here so we'll do that make sure you take the lids off and just be careful try not to make any bubbles when you pour in it and it's a lot easier there's one gone That's the second one gone. As you can see, it's more or less filled now. And let's put another one. And that will make three. So you can see that's how filled it is. You can put some more if you wanted to, but right now that is enough, that's plenty. That's all you really need. You don't really need more than that. So that's that. Let's go to the next step. Step two guys will be to put the milk on the fire. So the first thing we do we choose the biggest um the stove that you have in your kitchen. I'm using a gas stove because I think it's better than using an electric one and it, can, it, can, it boils the milk a lot quicker okay so the first thing we do we fire it up okay and you put it in the lowest as possible 
Okay, that's the lowest. And then we'll just put the milk in there. And then we'll move it slightly. Not too high, keep it in the medium. Start with low and then just keep going up to high. But for the time being, it's about medium. Okay, guys, ne next step is after the milk has been. It's been getting warm for five to ten minutes. All you have to start doing is start stirring it a bit, so it keeps, so everything gets warm accordingly. Nothing gets too hot and nothing gets too cold. So every everything is the same consistency. Okay. Also, pre try not to get bubbles. Because then if them they will stick to the side to the pot. Also we mixing it so that it doesn't stick to the bottom either. That's the last thing you want. You don't want it to get it burned. So give it a good mix to clockwise and then probably go also anti-clockwise. Okay. This is a crucial step on Get in the milk one. Try not to get bubbles. You will see the pot start to sweat on the side, so that's a good sign. Okay. So, bro, normally when the pot is really hot, then you won't see any sweat on the side. Okay. You can see here all the sweat from the pot down to here so that's a good sign all my milk was fresh so I have to keep going now now 10 to 20 minutes make sure what we need is the milk to get hot really really hot to about just just before the boiling point that's where we want the milk to be, just uh, just before the boiling point. Okay, you know what? You don't want it to be boiling, but you want it just before. Okay. Now, after another ten minutes, you can see that now my pot is more or less dry, all the way around. So that means that it's boiling, well, it's getting warm really well. Can see one or two drops around. Yeah. So I kept this stirring for a while. So this is after another 10 minutes, so I'll just keep stirring and stirring it, keeping it warm. And it's a good sign when you see all the steam, all the water that was sticking to the side of the pan is gone. So after another 5 minutes we can see that the milk is steaming, we will be able to see that. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add the what makes the curdle, the curdles for the milk. So now what we need, we need a measuring cup maybe. But I'm using this is my brother's drinking cup. So we in this one I'm gonna measure 50 millimeters of water. That's 50 millimeters of water. Then you get the uh, how using my pills. You can use your your lemon and all that stuff, or you can find depends what you find. But this is how it comes. So it, it comes as a pill. Okay. So then you use that in there. Well, before you add the water, sorry. You you put these ones in there, and then make sure they they get. Right there. So we make like a powder inside the cup and then you can do it when you add 
the 50 millimeters water boy is a lot easier to do a powder and then add the 50 millimeters of water okay so as you can see now that is just powder and now okay so 50 millimeters of water it doesn't matter whether it's cold or hot that's all you need. Now all you need to do is whisk and make sure it's diluted properly all the way. So you will end up with that kind of a each brown color mm. okay and that's how you finish it so next thing is to add it I'll show you how to add it okay guys so after mixing all the all the thing all you have to do is add it to the milk and make sure it's nice and stir properly add it to the milk so give a whisk first before adding so it keeps a continuous motion and then all you do add it slowly and that's it Just give it a good mixture everything gone and that's it, put the milk, that's it, let it set now, that's it, that's all you do, put that to one side, and now once that is done, all you have to do now is just wait for a while and let the curls come up, you will see that the milk starts to split up in a very deep, in little pieces, and uh, and then I'll show you after what to do. Right, okay guys, so I've been waiting 15 minutes since I put the, the liquid into the milk and now I'm going to show you how it looks. So, here it is. And then, you can see that now is like cheese you see it looks like paste so now it's gonna oh. zoom in okay so there you go that's how it looks now then you will find so if I cut it with this one that way one this way and then then as you open you will see the curdles these are the curdles that you need to make the cheese okay so that's that right now the milk is really is still really hot so so for the time being I'm gonna give you a really close up. That's how it looks. Okay. That's a liquid and that's our cheese. All those little lumps of milk are the cheese. Okay. So that's our cheese. So now what I'm gonna do, I've got my salt ready. You will need table salt. Don't use the big, the big salt. This is the one you need. Table salt. You will need about. It's your preference, really. Normally, I will use a teaspoon of salt later on. For the time being, all you need to do is just let it cook and let it rest. Like that. Okay. So every single bit of count. Then we put that in the sink. Okay, also another thing that you'll need 
will be one of these ones. Drain, I think it's called. So, and then that will you push it down, and you can get the liquid, all that green, yellow, each liquid out. Okay. So this is the one, one of them. Also, you can use these ones that I use maybe for pasta. They come very handy. Okay, so this one also we can be we're gonna be using maybe this one as well. And you'll need an extra pot. Okay, so something where you can drain the excess onto. It. Okay, so if you just give it a mix. Okay, and then you can either use your hands. Normal will use my hands. <coughs> For now, all you need is a cup. So I'll use I'll use in a cup. I'll use this one is too big. One second. Okay, so you need a mug, this one, mug, and then let's start with it. This one has a metal ring, so that metal ring go, will go like this, on this side, and then you can see the the liquid start coming out. So all you do for time is just try to press down the cables as much as you can. Try not to let them sink, get in yet, because you're gonna be extracting the liquid. Okay. So all I'm doing now is just pressing it down. You can also use maybe cheesecloth, which is like a net. Oh, I just got it. So, which is like a net. And then all you will do, you put your cables into it, and that is it. Okay. There are different ways to do. What normally I would do with my hand, it's a lot quicker for me. And then the cheese is in the right condition, right consistency, when it's not coming through the net. I'll zoom in to show you what I mean. Okay. Look, that's normal cheese. Okay. Right, watch. Can you see? All that comes out is the liquid, and then this is still like a reservoir in there. Okay. Right, so that's that, and then we can either use this pot as well as the one side. Sinking that, fill up the cup, and then do this. Just get all the liquid out. Okay, so we keep pressing, filling it up. This will take a while. So, and then that's all you do for the time being, and then all you need to get out is this liquid. And then that liquid just throw in the drain. Throw away in the sink. And that's it. Okay? That's all you need to do for the time being. It's gonna be hot, it's gonna still hot. So take your time with it. And then just do it slowly. And just take it easy with it. So, guys, now this is how it's looking now. So, what I've done, I put a cloth. That, that I got instead of using the cheese cloth, I'm using a cloth I have for the kitchen, especially just for my cheese. And then 
you can use anything this one is really good for draining so you squeeze and you can see it drop in here and then you may as well need another pot to put the rest of the cheese in so so try to squeeze as much liquid as you can that's all the liquid that keep, keeps coming out that's the way I do it you can find different methods to do this some people just tend to do a knot in this and then hang it from the top of the pan and then just hang it like that and then just let it drain overnight but mine will be done and then if I open it you will see that what we got inside is now cheese that is cheese it has no flavor right now we'll look at the consistency so you can see look for now right now it's soft you can see you can mold it it's not very it has cheese it doesn't have a cheese consistency yet because it needs to be so it's a bit of a mess right now okay so once you drain some of the moisture what you can do is try to get as much as you can out of the cheese that will help this one is still still coming out so try to get as much as the as much as the juice out that is really handy So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Get all the liquid out and then just find another bowl like this one and then just place it there. Okay guys, so after draining all the liquid out, this is the cheese. So this is what I get now. Consistency is cheese consistency now. Very it's not very soft, but look it's hard now ok so what we're gonna do now is make it like that, do this all the way now and this is the time when you can add your salt ok This is the kind of cheese that I do. So now, if we open this. With this spoon. Okay. This spoon. On the graph. One teaspoon of salt, okay, and just do it on top of your hand, and then you can just spread it about, okay. Let's start with one, and then we're awake. It's going to be a bit sticky that is okay, if it's a bit dry that is okay too that's no problem but the more water that you want that you get out of the cheese the better okay so this is not like a dough if, if you will okay. so make 
make sure you aren't mixing very well. And then you can try maybe when once it's well mixed, try a bit. Nothing for mine. I still need a bit more. So I'm gonna add another less than half of a spoon. About that much. Okay. And then just do it as I need it. And that's it. Then give it a good mix. Mine is this consistency because when it gets to the so the all the salt concentrate perfectly the cheese so it's nice and salty evenly everywhere when you place it on the molds. Then once it's on the mold you can leave it for a night on the in the freezer and then on the morning tomorrow or the day after you will take it out and you put some clean fill around it and that will keep the cheese nice and moisture for your breakfast or for your toast or whenever you gonna eat, you eat the cheese okay this time I'll, this is about 400 to 300 to 400 grams of cheese which is quite a lot actually. It looks like it's a kilo in here instead of that, but yeah, that's all you get. Then all you do now is just move it and move it so you get all the salty, salty it spread to another bit. I think that now is perfect. Maybe a little more just in case to make sure that is everything nice nice and done ok so last bit mixing so it should be like that right ok this is how consistent it should be. Of course, the more the more water you take out of it, the more that it's gonna be dry. The dry, I guess, but I don't like it to dry myself. I like it with a bit of moisture into it. Okay. And then the last step, once you're happy with the salt that you put in I think is the right consistency in now ok you can make a multi color cheeses by just going and grabbing some food coloring you can put a portion and make it blue, red and it's good for a party or for things like that for a dessert you can surprise your clients by using a multi color cheese So by mixing it all you're doing is bonding all the salt and all the milk with the cheese together making it more flavor rich. So that's how it should finish. Okay. 
sometimes I'll do even more drier than this sometimes this is how it should look like okay if I squeeze that is how it comes out Okay guys, so this is finished now, so thank you very much, enjoy your cheese and don't forget to subscribe.